I've been saying this about Lamar Jackson. I rushed home to watch him. Just like I used to rush home to watch Tim Tebow. And I've said, Lamar Jackson's a more talented version of Tim Tebow. And all I get is pushback. All I get is pushback. And I say, no, no, no. No, you watch what's going to happen. Both guys were overdrafted. Both guys are projects, not prospects. Tim Tebow was a project. He was never a prospect. Lamar Jackson's a project. He's not Sam Darnold. He's not Josh Rosen. You watched them last night. He's not even close. He's not even close. With the way Lamar Jackson has been dominating the league so far, he's made it easy for us to forget what he was expected to be as an NFL quarterback. To think that players like Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, and even Josh Rosen were supposed to be more NFL ready than Lamar, it really puts things into perspective for us and makes us wonder how he has exceeded expectations to the highest degree possible at this point of his career. And the more research I've done on Lamar's background, the more I begin to understand that what's happening is the furthest thing from a fluke, and what we've seen up to this point is only the beginning of us witnessing potentially the most revolutionary player in NFL history. So in today's video, I'm going to be diving deeper into Lamar Jackson's childhood and I'll show you guys what molded Lamar at a young age, making him the MVP caliber player he is today. Dealing with adversity is something that Lamar has been used to since a young age. At 8 years old, his father and grandma passed away on the same day, leaving his mother no choice but to support Lamar and his younger brother the best she could. Lamar's mother, Felicia Jones, was an athlete herself growing up and figured that putting them in organized sports would be a great way to help them get over their terrible losses. So after Lamar's first season in Pop Warner and scoring a touchdown almost every time he touched the ball, Felicia knew she had something special in her son. But what she did in order to get the most out of her son throughout his childhood is what stands out more than anything else. She reached out to a local quarterback trainer in Lamar's hometown of Pompano Beach, Florida. But not only did she set him up with a trainer, she watched very closely during each of his workouts, and on the days Lamar wasn't meeting with his trainer, she would have him do those same exact drills at home in their backyard. She would also put on shoulder pads and line up against Lamar and his younger brother in the backyard to get them ready for the season. Now don't get it twisted and assume that she was just trying to light her kid up. She was simply trying to help Lamar get ready and with her athletic abilities, she figured that she could get the most out of him in doing so. Even though Lamar would excel every time he stepped on the field, his first two years of high school, he didn't get the playing time that him and his mother thought he should. So he ended up transferring to Boynton Beach High School for his junior year after they promised him he would start at quarterback on varsity. In the first play of his first spring scrimmage at his new school, he went 60 yards to the house untouched and his head coach instantly decided that it might be a good idea to structure the offense around Lamar. So while Lamar was running the offense the way he wanted to throughout high school, he was becoming one of the top dual threat quarterbacks out of Florida. Now his natural ability definitely can't be ignored, but the way his mother had him go about his business in high school is what has helped him play to his full potential. Lamar would go straight home after every practice to spend time with his family and never went to parties throughout high school. Although his highlight tapes made it pretty obvious that he could not only run but sling the ball as well, he was still only rated a 3 star prospect from 24-7 sports. And most of the 15 schools that offered him a scholarship out of high school said that they wanted him to play wide receiver rather than quarterback. Not only were Lamar and his mother offended, Felicia said that there was no way Lamar would play anything other than quarterback in college after how much time and effort they invested in him being a quarterback. Even Louisville's former head coach Bobby Petrino had concerns about whether or not Lamar could play quarterback in college. But after the head coach met with Lamar and saw the type of humble leader and kid he was, he knew that quarterback would fit his personality more than anything else. 
But the learning curve of becoming a college quarterback compared to high school was something that Lamar wasn't necessarily prepared for. In high school, Lamar's team didn't even have a playbook, and his head coach would tell Lamar the formation, type of play, and which routes he wanted each receiver to run. So when he got to Louisville and saw what the playbook entailed, it was completely foreign to him and he had no idea how he was going to learn an entire playbook without ever even looking at one in high school. The thought of him being the starting quarterback as a freshman without ever looking at a playbook figured to be almost impossible by the standards of his coaches. But the values that were preached to Lamar from his mother throughout his childhood gave him no other choice but to study the playbook front to back as much as he possibly could. His coaches were amazed at how fast he learned the playbook, and although he was far from perfect calling the plays, he earned the starting job as a freshman. Lamar really came into his own his sophomore year by winning the Heisman, and in the first half of the first game of the year, he passed for eight touchdowns. Lamar had another impressive season as a junior and finished as the runner-up to Baker Mayfield for the Heisman. He then declared for the NFL draft, but most pro scouts and the media thought that he'd be better suited as a wide receiver in the league. Now, you know what they're saying about you. What they're saying about you is that you're an elite athlete. Yeah. You're a leader. Mm. They love, they, everybody got nothing but love for you. Oh. But the football aficionados question your ability to be in the pocket and fling that football with accuracy. You complete yeah. about 58% of your passes, okay? Yeah. So they're looking at it from that perspective, and they got questions about whether or not you've got longevity as a quarterback yeah. in the National Football League. To that, you say what? Uh, you're gonna have to see. <laughs> you have to see. You know. So before becoming a pro in the NFL, every player is faced with the stressful decision of which agent to decide on prior to being drafted to handle the business side of things. And to nobody's surprise, Lamar didn't look too far into who he wanted to be his agent. And yes, his own mother is his agent. Most moms always say that they know what their best interest is for their child, but the fact that Lamar's mom is his own agent and has done everything required of a professional sports agent, it's one of the crazier things you'll ever hear. There was simply nothing that could have been done to turn Lamar into a wide receiver, and him and his mother made sure of that. After the Baltimore Ravens traded up to select Lamar as the last pick of the first round in the draft, Coach John Harbaugh told the media time and time again that he was indeed a quarterback and they were really excited about his future with the Ravens. During the beginning of his rookie year, he was used sparingly in special packages, but former Super Bowl champ Joe Flacco was still their guy. The Ravens were off to a 4-5 start with Flacco at quarterback, but he sustained an injury in Week 9 against the Steelers, and it was now Lamar's time to take over the team. And not only did he take over the team, Coach John Harbaugh completely changed their entire offensive scheme when Lamar took over, and he led them to a 6-1 record over their last 7 games and a playoff berth. When Flacco got healthy, it was a no-brainer for Harbaugh to stick with Lamar as he had changed the fortune of their season and the way they ran their offense. But even after leading them to the playoffs, Lamar was still criticized as a quarterback over the offseason and had doubters on his ability to make all the necessary throws to be an NFL quarterback. Lamar simply told everyone to wait and see and has had the type of season that nobody has ever seen in the league. Despite being second in the MVP race according to the odds in Vegas, beating the 8-1 Patriots and 8-2 Seahawks so far, and on pace to shatter several NFL records for a quarterback, there are still people saying that Lamar's playstyle isn't the type that will result in playoff success. I guess the only way Lamar can finally prove everyone wrong is to hold up the Lombardi Trophy, which is definitely not a stretch for the Ravens to do this year. However, the truth is that anything said about Lamar, negative or positive, is completely irrelevant. No matter the competition, he has proven time and time again that he not only belongs in the league, but he's unlike anything we've ever seen and probably will ever see in the league. 
His success at every level of competition has to be attributed to his natural talents, but the support and lifelong values Lamar was taught by his mother from a young age is easily one of the reasons why Lamar has been able to overcome the doubt he's received. Although success is normally measured on the field by a variety of things, the positive energy he's brought to the Ravens franchise is something that cannot be measured. The man has truly been an inspiration for millions of people, and I can't wait to see what's in store for him. If you guys enjoyed today's video, drop a like for me and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I appreciate everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.